Hey, this is Jim McElvain from Optima Batteries, and while we are all practicing some social distancing, I thought I'd check in with one of my friends, Ken Lingenfelter, and maybe catch him at the Lingenfelter Collection, where he might be able to take us on a virtual tour. So, I'm going to give Ken a call right now and see if we can connect. Hey, Jim. Hey, Ken, how are you doing? I'm great. How about you? Good. You wouldn't happen to be at the Lingenfelter collection today, Yeah, as a you? matter of fact, I am. This is a picture of the uh, Lamborghini Reventon here. Uh, we've got the car out in the, uh, in the collection. We'll make uh, a point to make sure we get a look at it. This is a scale model of the actual car that they gave me when they delivered it. So. That's amazing. Well, let's go see the collection. All right, let's get it done. So there's a lot of unique cars in here. and uh, <laughs> I see unique staring right at me there. <laughs> how about that? Yeah. Well, you know, um, the thing is, too, uh, this isn't a collection of cars like all Chevys or all convertibles or something like that. These are the cars that I liked over the years. You know, the, I was a teenager at the time when the muscle cars were a big deal. And so a lot of these uh, cars in this room are cars that uh, I liked as a, as a late teenager. Um, I always like to point out uh, this uh, Chevy Nova. This is uh, kind of like one of the best muscle cars I think you could ever have. It was a, it's a 350 SS four-speed transmission. There's no carpet on the floor. It was just really basically a, a car for a teenager to go out and have a lot of fun in. Uh, I've been a station wagon guy for a long time. This is a, a Nova wagon that was uh, restored and actually driven right across the the country. Uh, and then we acquired it at a Barrett Jackson auction. It's got a four-speed transmission and I mean, it's not going to break any speed records, but it does get a ton of attention. So where do you find your station wagons? Is, are, are those at auctions as well? Or, or are your main sources for cars auctions? Or do you find them in Craigslist and bring a trailer and Auto Trader, places like that? So I got to tell you, I'm connected with any and all of those. Uh, <laughs> and so it's a matter of just absolutely spotting things. This one you'll get a kick out of, Jim. Uh, this is a Gremlin. Um, it's a V8 and uh, happens to be one of the Levi Gremlins. Oh, wow. I want to show you the inside of this because uh, a lot of people didn't even understand that there was a Levi Gremlin. And one of the really cool parts is even this little pocket in the, in the door thing here. And so the, all the interior material is denim, is that correct? Yep, Levi jeans. The seats and everything? Yep. Wow. Uh, they actually even put their... Uh, their logo on these cars back in the day. Now this happens to be a V8 car and a four-speed car. And um, you know, that obviously a four-speed and a V8 with something like this is pretty wild. Uh, this next car is very cool too. This is a burnt orange uh, 71 Camaro Z28 with the Rally Sport front end. I had almost this identical car as a 17-year-old. Uh, Mine was an SS396, but it was still the burnt orange color, and it was a one-year color only. I was going to say that seemed like a rare color. Isn't that the car that we used for a charger commercial, for an Optima battery maintainer commercial? Yeah, years I, ago? I actually think it is. And you know, this whole place is full of your, re your uh, uh, chargers here. We keep all these cars all charged up, so uh, the battery tenders on all these cars are Optima. Well, we appreciate that, and, and I like citing your, your collection a lot because people can, can find it online, and, and I say I know you've probably seen this collection before because people watch the videos and they look at all the pictures, I, but I always encourage them to look at it again and see all the, the extension cords coming out from underneath the cars because, I mean, you could buy a new battery every time you want to take a car out, but you, you do the smart thing and you keep them plugged in and, and the batteries topped off so they're ready to go when you need them. Well, that's my choice. And you know, when you've got cars like this, you really do need to maintain them. So you've got to have them out and about a bit. And uh, so it's a whole lot easier to make sure that the batteries are up and charged and ready to go. And, and uh, we've, got, uh, we've got your tenders on all of these. Now I'm gonna test you a little bit on this, Jim. Uh-oh. This, this is a really unique car. I bought this car and bring a trailer. I don't know that you've ever seen one before. That looks like a little bit like an Excalibur like they used to make in Wisconsin off of like a F-body chassis. Yeah, well, you're kind of close because the guys who built uh, something similar to the Excalibur is the, the Zimmer. And this okay. really is a Zimmer, but they call it a Quicksilver. And it was built off of a uh, Pontiac Fiero. Oh, a Fiero, okay. So it's mid-engine? Yeah, it's mid-engine. 
Um, and I got to tell you, I really have been teased by a lot of people about this car. Uh, when people saw me bidding on it on Bring a Trailer, I think they thought maybe I needed some psychiatric help. But uh, but I actually really liked the style back in the day. They only built 130 of them, and um, so it's uh, it's kind of a fun thing for me to have in the collection here. That has to be the only one left. I think there might be two or three more, but they're, wow. they didn't hold up very well. And this one is in great shape. It's only got about 11,000 miles on it. So, Back in the day, um, my dad uh, ran a Fisher body plant. He was an executive at General Motors. And um, that plant was responsible for the building the old Tornado. And uh, this is a really great example of one from back in the day. You remember the flip up headlights and front wheel drive. It was really kind of the first grand touring kind of a car. Uh, th that, that looks like a Goodfellas mobster car. Like one, one of those guys would have pulled up right after the Luf Lufthansa heist with, in one of those cars. Hey, there you go. I, I, <laughs> I can see that myself. So this is a really unique car and this is a fun car to own. Um, we call this car the Blue Angels car. And the reason we do that is uh, back in the day, we were convinced to uh, race the Blue Angels jet team with this car for the quarter mile. Uh, we smoked them on the quarter mile. They kind of caught us after that. But uh, zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds. It's a twin turbo. Um, this is a wild car. Uh, but what was also fun about that is we've, you know, kind of generated a relationship between us and the Blue Angels at that time. and. And they fly at the um, airport that's just south of us here. They come in every other year. And we invite the crew and the pilots up here for a dinner. And they come up and um, uh, we have a great time. They're all gearheads, obviously. Yeah, I have to believe those guys are in the cars. Anything that goes fast, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, we politely run the video every time they're here with us smoking them on the quarter mile. But uh, it's all in fun. So this is the car that inspired me. I mean, I was at 10 years old. My dad took me to an open house at uh, the uh, tech center at General Motors. And this car was on display along with the Mako Sharks. And I have to tell you, um, I was already a car guy, but this turned me into a Corvette guy for life. To me, the split window design, looking through that back window, uh, it just, it's hard to describe, but it did something to me. And uh, I was just, going to be a Corvette guy for life at that point. The one car that really stands out in the Corvette room here and a lot of people come to see is the Duntoff mule car. Oh yeah. This is the Corvette that Zora Duntoff used to develop future Corvettes. A lot of people say it was the first V8 Corvette. The motor was built actually by Smokey Yannick. Did 150 miles an hour down at Daytona. I can show you a picture here of uh, Probably on the sand, huh? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, really. This is Zora behind the wheel. And uh, pretty big, important part of the car collection. I'm not quite sure what this wing did for him. Um, pretty unique uh, uh, design and style. All right, so let's head from here into the uh, exotic room. This was my summer driver last year. And, you know, you know, I'm a Corvette guy, you know, I've always had Corvettes. I'm absolutely enchanted with this car. I think you're sentimental too, because that's the last front engine Corvette, right? Well, you know, I am. I didn't know that at the time I bought it. I kind of figured there might be a mid engine coming, but um, uh, these are my Corvette colors. I'm always a white with red interior guy. This is a manual transmission car. I put 20,000 miles on this thing in the summer, and obviously I have wow. a number of cars to choose from, but... Uh, <laughs> It's just absolutely an amazing car. And uh, although I have to tell you, now it has some competition. Oh, look at that. This is our C8, first C8. And uh, again, white with red. We just, we got it a couple weeks ago. I had the whole car expelled. Um, I don't have any real seat time in it yet. I'll start next week. Got to put the 500 break-in miles on it. But I have to tell you, this car is just stunning. And uh, I really can't wait to get it out and, and have some fun with it. This happens to be Jazz. This is the Pontiac Solstice that was part of the Transformers movie. And uh, I bought this at a Barrett Jackson auction. Uh, I remember buying this car and some young kid came down from the audience and 
he, he said, hey, mister, you just bought Jazz. And I really just thought it was a good looking Solstice. That's why I bought it. So that's the hero car from the movie? This is the movie car. And wow. uh, it's, uh, it's kind of fun because, uh, you know, when the kids come in through our charity events, they all recognize it right away. One of the jewels of the collection, this is the uh, LaFerrari. The hybrid, environmentally conscious, right? Yeah, how about that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, this is an amazing car. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, you had to be invited to buy this car. And uh, I really feel fortunate to have one. Um, I did have, I have had some seat time in it, and it is truly an amazing car. It's one of those cars you drive and you want to get back in and drive a whole lot more. And you've got another truck back there. Yeah, this is a great truck, uh, Jim. This is one of our latest products. This is the um, Colorado, and this is a great truck right from the factory. I mean, General Motors did an amazing job with this truck, but it's a little underpowered. So um, we added a supercharger. Doesn't look too dirty. I, I don't know if it's been properly field tested, and I would suggest maybe you bring it out to the 2021 King of the Hammers and let us try it out for a week and make sure it's it's it'll stand up to the abuse. Yeah, I actually like that idea. Let's just work on making that happen, okay? <laughs> okay. All right, sounds good. So, and then, you know, when we came in, uh, when we were in the lobby, we uh, looked at a, a car that was in a display, and that's this is the Lamborghini Reventon. Uh, this is one of 20 built. I bought this car brand new. I had a great relationship with the uh, people and the president of Lamborghini at the time. And uh, it has a very stealthy kind of a look to it. This is a matte finish on the car. And that's not a wrap, that's how it came to you? Yeah, this is, uh, it's painted this way. And it was designed after the Rapture jet that they used in NATO. So you can see kind of a military flair to it with the color and so on and so forth. And, and I've watched the video of this car that you have online. And, and for folks who are upset that we missed the Oldsmobile Aurora or some of the other cars in the collection, where can they go to see more of this car, video of this car as the dash lights up and things like that? We've got a portion of our website. If you go out to Lingenfelder.com, there is a button you can press that says Lingenfelder Collection. And, and it'll give you a 30 second tour of the car collection here. Uh, right after that video is another video of one of the um, charity events we do here, uh, of which we do many. And uh, it'll give you a good taste of what's here. Well, Ken, we can't thank you enough for, for sharing your collection with us. And, and I know I follow you on Twitter and I would encourage anybody else on Twitter to do the same because uh, as soon as you get a car, you, you like to share it with folks on there. And it, it's great to see the, the latest additions to your fantastic collection. Well, you know, thanks, Jim. I mean, it's passion that drives all of this, as you know. And there are a lot of very passionate car people out there. Right. This is a lot of fun. We really enjoy uh, getting an opportunity to share these cars with folks. What a shame it would be if we had all these cars and we didn't share them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I would encourage anybody, if they ever have an opportunity to, to go to one of your charity events there, just jump at the chance to go see these cars in person because it's, it's really a phenomenal collection. And there's, there's not many collections like this in the world. Well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Uh, glad we had an opportunity to do this. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Have a great week. All right, all the best, buddy. Talk to you soon. Stay safe.